at that time, the US and NATO governments were regularly shocked and appalled at Assad's killing their own people. Uh, and um, working with the imperialists were the, uh, and the anti-Assad invective was Turkey, who was a member of NATO, and the Gulf Cooperation Council and the Arab League, with Saudi Arabia leading the charge, that great uh, bastion of human rights and freedom, which went into Bahrain on US tanks to, to try to stop the uprising there and couldn't do it. Um, the, op the armed opposition grew more aggressive, so that by mid-March this year, heavy fighting was taking place in Damascus, uh, and uh, uh, Syrian government buildings in Damascus and in Aleppo were being blown up. So it went, came right to the home. Uh, meanwhile, the, the, the Syrian government has maintained all along that its government officials and its military has been under attack around the country. And this has been ignored in the media and not, not even printed. Uh, so while accusing Assad of murder, the imperialists were arming the reactionaries. Now the UN came in uh, to, to cover for the imperialists actually and has passed resolutions and conduct investigations that justify takeovers. This has been the, US, the UN's uh, kind of role in this period, starting with Yugoslavia. And Kofi Annan is, there, is the imperialist man. Now, he was on the team that formulated the, quote, responsibility to protect the doctrine, which is what's been used to go in with for humanitarian bombings. It's a special doctrine that the UN formed uh, in conjunction with NATO and then has given it, uh, the green light to it. And he endorsed it when he was uh, the UN General Secretary. And in 2004, the UN General Secretary, he gave the UN the mandate uh, to let the French, U.S., and, and Canadians intervene and depose uh, Jean, Jean Bellon Aristide in Haiti. Um, and for the same reason that they're trying to use right now to prevent a humanitarian catastrophe. He provided us cover for a similar action for French imperialism to tighten its grip on the Ivy Coast in 2006. And in Syria, uh, Anand's round of shuttle diplomacy has repeatedly called for a Syrian ceasefire, but very rarely mentioned that the rebels, uh, the counter-revolutionaries, the reactionaries, uh, refuse a ceasefire and hasn't put much pressure on them uh, to do that. Syria agreed to a ceasefire on March 27th, but the reactionaries did not. Uh, and it was in, in after that point, and particularly in May, that the Washington reports that, that the, the Contras had begun receiving, receiving significantly more weapons and a higher uh, caliber of weaponry. Uh, an Israeli uh, site, Depthophile, received that, uh, said that, that by the end of May they received the first gener the third generation anti-tank -tank weaponry, so they have anti-tank missiles. Um, they get them from the Saudis and Qatari intelligence agencies following a secret message from President Obama. And while the, action, the reactionaries grew bolder and better equipped each day, Hillary Clinton regularly accused Assad of having, quote, defiled the ceasefire. Uh, so who is being armed? Uh, they say that the Free Syrian Army is made up of deserters uh, from the Syrian army. However, Spiegel Online reported in February from sources in Beirut that hundreds of foreign fighters were seen coming across the border and attaching themselves to this uh, Free Syrian Army. Uh, then that's uh, speculated that they came primarily from Iraq, Lebanon, with a few from Saudi Arabia, and you can tell by the accent. Uh, Human Rights March in March accused the Syrian armed opposition members of, quote, kidnappings. But this is Human Rights Watch, which is no friend of Syria. Kidnappings, the use of torture and execution. Some of the attacks targeted Shias and Alawites appear to be motivated by sectarianism. Kidnappings included old people and children held for ransom, torturing and killing of civilians. Uh, a UN mandated commission of inquiry report in February described similar things by the so-called Free Syrian Army. 
<laughs> Additionally, Spiegel Online say that Syrian rebels have formed their own laws, courts, and death squads in homes. So we don't see this in the media, you know? Additional reports of Al-Qaeda forces, sectarian forces that kill by um, religious affiliation. Which that's the U.S. specialty, finding them and, and getting them loose. And I'm sure that that was Ford's specialty. I mean, that, that's, that's my view, but uh, that's what they do. You know, they, they, they find forces and pit them against each other. The Hula Massacre. Now, this is the big massacre. Uh, so so and, and we saw these headlines. Uh, Syrian civilians shelled, children, whole families killed, you know. All right, they were killed by being artillery that the Syrian government is, is bombing its own cities. Well, on, on closer look, it seemed that the families were killed up close by having their throats slit and by being shot up close. Uh, but there was, nobody said, and then the media stopped talking about that, but they didn't stop talking about the massacre and how disgusting and how, you know, terrible Assad was. And uh, uh, the Russian news agency, Anna, sent a crew in. And they interviewed a dozen witnesses uh, after the massacre, and the report concluded that the attack was carried out by a unit of armed fighters from Rastan, and more than 700 gunmen were involved. They brought the city under their control and ben with, began with a cleansing action against loyalist pro-Assad families, Sunni families that were pro-Assad, including elderly people, women, and also children. The dead were then the UN was called in. The dead was presented to the UN and the international community as victims of the Syrian army. Residents knew many of the killers by name and identify them as local cr criminal elements now working for the so-called Free Syrian Army. And they said that sectarian violence, Alawites killing Sunnis, uh, all that was, was just not true. It was, was just the opposite. And uh, the, 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 the report continues that uh, this can be found online, uh, the, whole, the whole thing. Counter-revolutionaries then posed as villagers and invited the UN observers in. Some put on the, the uniforms of Syrian soldiers they had killed and said they were defectives. All right. The aftermath was without, without an investigation of this, the UN Security Council reacted by unanimously condemning, condemning Syria for allegedly using tanks and artillery after agreeing to a ceasefire. They didn't say Syria did. They, their reaction to it was, Syria is using artillery after saying it won't have a ceasefire. Uh, and then the governments of the US, the Netherlands, Australia, Great Britain, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Bulgaria, and Canada expel Syrian diplomats. That was real quick. That was like two days after, which, which makes you think it was prepared in advance. You know? Uh, now, since then, the, the ANA report has been collaborated by the conservative newspaper Alaman Zaytung and also the. the um, I'm going to go over. The, uh, the UK's Channel 4 senior reporter said that rebels led him into the line of fire and tried him get, to get him killed by Syrian military forces so it would look bad for Assad. And uh, the, a photo uh, that was run by BBC and connected with Hula of dozens of bodies, which BBC said, said, said was uh, the aftermath of the Hula massacre, was taken in Iraq in March 2003. And also on, on June 7th, in, on his blog, the, the BBC's senior news editor, John Williams, said there was no evidence whatsoever to identify either the Syrian army or Alawite militias as the perpetrators of the Hula massacre. But this was on the blog. It wasn't on BBC. So this is really what's going on there, you know? The UN has done no independent, no independent invest, in, uh, investigation to date. And uh, Kofi Annan and General Secretary Ba'i Ki Moon, as, as late as Ju June 7th, uh, put the responsibility for the Hula massacre on, on Assad. Uh, 
The UN Human Rights Commission has passed a resolution calling for investigation, and some are charging that it's only considering information supplied by the supporters of the armed opposition. And you know that everything in the Times, everything in the, in the bourgeois media across the board is supplied by the um, information supplied by the armed opposition. And they've just recently started saying that before they just said human rights groups in Syria, and it was all the armed opposition.